I've had an unusually large number of requests recently to do a demonstration for how I cut stencils. So, I thought I would just do that real quick. Um, I don't cut a ton of my own stencils. In fact, I just have, really, I have maybe two or three. So it's not something that I do often, but I do it, you know, on occasion. And um, I have found what works best for me, but it might be trial and error for you, depending on, you know, what you prefer and the kind of materials you have available. I use the tools that I use to cut stencils. I use a, this is a Dremel VersaTip tool, and it comes with um, these different tips, different size and shape tips, plus the exacto tip. And you can use these for, see this one I use mostly for soldering, so you can solder with it, you can cut with it, you can do other little things with it, I don't know, but it's, it's versatile, hence VersaTip. So there you go, that's what I use. <laughs> Um, you can use a regular soldering iron. Um, I have not had good luck with using one of those, you know, pointy tip deals. Even something little like that, I find that it, it leaves a little lip on my plastic when I cut, and I don't like that. So um, I have better luck with the blade. But just depending on the tool and how hot it gets and the thickness of your plastic, one of these might be is fine for you. So you can use a soldering iron. You can use a hot knife. There are um, tools like this that come with just the X-Acto blade. I have another one, but the shaft on it is really long, which makes it hard to do detail work. So you need something with a shorter shaft if you get a hot knife. Um, <clears throat> you can use uh, stencil cutting tools. There are tools available that are made specifically for cutting stencils. So, you know, use what you have or whatever is available in your price range. You just need something pointy and hot. Then you need some plastic. Um, this, you can use recycled report covers. Um, you can use heavy duty sheet protectors, you can use index dividers. This, what I prefer to use, I can feel the heat coming off of that, that's crazy. What I prefer to use is this acetate that I get at the art supply store, Jerry's Art Aroma. It is a drafting film and it comes in all kinds of different weights and I prefer kind of a heavy weight one. Um, because I, I want my stencils to be sturdy. I'm kind of hard on them. So I get this heavyweight drafting acetate and it's really not that expensive because it comes in huge sheets probably about the size of two poster boards, two full-size poster boards put together. That's the size sheet that it comes in. It's also available in rolls but I just buy it by the sheet. Um, and one sheet, depending on the thickness that you get, you know, it's anywhere from two or three dollars up to ten dollars for the sheet. And the thickness I get, which I, I really can't remember, it's either a seven mil or a ten mil, I'm not sure. Anyway, I think I pay maybe eight dollars for the huge sheet. And that's plenty, you know, it, it lasts because um, I don't cut a ton of stencils. But, you know, you have all kinds of options. Images, you can find some on the internet. Um, make sure that they are available to download for free and not um, copyright protected by the artist because, you know, that's not good. Don't steal their stuff. Um, you can draw your own. I have here a couple that I've drawn. These are some of my old doodles that I pulled out. And this is one of them that I want to make a stencil of. I have written on here, cut black. <laughs> that is because I have found when I'm cutting stencils, I get very confused as to which part I'm supposed to cut out and which part I'm keeping. And I, I know that's weird, but it is confusing. So on this one, I have made a note that I have to cut away the black areas. 
that is going to leave me with a okay don't don't set your acetate down because you'll lose it forever here it is <laughs> that's going to leave me with a rectangular stencil with cutaway areas in it which is what I want now I'm going to cut away the black areas <laughs> let's see if I had to try in my head I think that is what I want yeah cut away the black areas then I will have to clean up the edges of the acetate and then I will have me a rectangle shape with these cut out yeah that's what I want okay so can we see hope so just gonna press down and it doesn't take a whole lot of pressure and you know this acetate is fairly thick so um, it does take a little bit but this is one of the reasons why I like using a hot knife as opposed to just a tip or a stencil cutting tool and that's because the heat and the blade work together to um, make it easier to cut when I'm through I will sometimes go back and kind of clean up so, you know, that's not quite the shape that I want. I'll go back and kind of clean up my little um, boo boos. There we go. Yeah, smooth everything out. But for now, let's just get these little, little boogers cut out. This is not something you can really rush, and you want to be real careful when you're cutting. See, that's really close to that one, because that's going to be a little vulnerable point and make it easy for your stencil to tear apart. So sometimes you might have to leave a little extra space if you're cutting an original design or something that wasn't really intended to be a stencil do-it-yourself stenciling stuff is um, if you're doing highly detailed intricate images yeah more power to you <laughs> it is not easy to do uh, it's possible yeah but I tend to stick with simple to cut bold images I don't do um, when I use stencils you know, my style is not the perfect uh, impression. That's not what I'm looking for. Uh, mine are very kind of messy, collagey, and so uh, if I, my cutting's a little bit wonky, that's all right. I was watching a video just the other day from someone who was cutting her own stencils using a really cute flower shape. Um, I can't remember her name. It's someone that I, I just came across recently. So she's new to me. I'll try to remember to put a link to her video because I think that she used a stencil tool um, to cut hers. So I'll, I'll try to remember to look that up and put her link in the description so that you can go and watch her because you know it's always good to watch two or three people and see how they do it and, and decide which method you want to use. Thunder, can you hear the thunder? I need to go to the grocery store but it's just like dark and raining and thunder and Heck no, I'm not going to the store. I can wait. I don't go grocery shopping in the weather. I wait till there's no weather. Oh, that one's funky. All right, we're going to have to fix that. You can see that I'm kind of turning this while my knife is still pressed down. Yeah, you know, it's just, you know, you can do that. You can not. Whatever. Um, I'll, I'll lift and do this one and show you. This one went off the page in my sketchbook. So you can just pick back up where you left off. I don't know. 
I kind of missed it a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> Close enough. Alrighty. Now, I'm going to take my pattern off of here, and I'm going to kind of see where I need to do any cleanup or repairs. Oh, I forgot to mention, this piece of glass that I'm using, this is a piece of oven glass. And um, I got this quite a while ago at American Science and Surplus. It was maybe, I don't know, three or four dollars. It is, it's what's used in ovens, you know, the cooking oven ovens. And it is heat proof up to something like 1600 degrees. Um, so there is nothing in my house that gets hot enough that will break this glass. I can lay, you know, my heat tools on it, anything on it, and it is completely heat resistant. Now, does it get hot if I lay something on it? Yes, it does. If I lay my iron on it and pick it up, it's going to get hot, but the glass is not going to break. It will warm what's, whatever is underneath it, so it's not a heat barrier. It is just something to set hot things on. It's my hot pad for crafting, put it that way. Okay, let's see what I need to fix up here. This one is a little wonky. I think so. Shall we um, test it out before I do another one? Let's do that. Well, that made a mess. There we go. Let's do another one. Let's try this one. This one is my um, tattoo. I don't know that you can see it. I have a white ink tattoo right here. And I drew this one, I think, two or three years ago. So, um, I had this scrap of acetate, left, and it just barely fits on. So let's see if we can do this. This one is going to be... Ugh, this is one of those that's going to kick my butt. Yeah, do I cut away the black or the white? I'm not sure. It seems logical to cut away the white, but that's going to leave me with a... No, that'll be right, because that's what I want. Okay, let's do this. Let's just start cutting. I am feeling the pull to get another tattoo, <laughs> which I told myself I was not going to do. I do not want to be covered in tattoos. Honestly, I don't. Um, I don't want to go overboard. And I love my white ink. If I do get another one, it's going to be white as well. Because it's, um, really no one knows I have it unless I show it to them. And that's what I like about it. I, you know, I'm not, uh, don't want to get tattoos just for the sake of having tattoos. This has meaning for me. And my uh, next one will too. It is raining like crazy out there right now. And Jason just sent me a text. I can always count on him anytime it rains. Or even, you know, clouds up other than our usual, you know, daily Houston cloud cover we have. He will send me a text and say, is it raining over there? I don't know why he needs to know. I don't know if he's just curious or what, but every time. He works in, uh, we live in Northwest Houston and he works in Southwest Houston. He has like an hour and a half commute every day 
one way. <laughs> it's bad. Uh, yeah, we've decided we need to move. <laughs> so, you know, he's practically in a whole different climate <laughs> than I am. It's probably a good idea not to drink a whole bunch of coffee before you do this. Because you know, that's having an effect on my ability to actually put the blade down. Lovely. Yep. See? No, you really can't see. No, oh, alright. Except trust me. I cut out a really cool face the other day and then I was rinsing it off after I used it. I don't know why I did that. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But I did and then I pulled her eyeball off. It was just tragic. Here's our new stencils. We have this one. And this one. Oh, I forgot to trim. I'll I'll trim up those edges a little bit so that it's nice and neat. I forgot to do that. And this is the one that I cut yesterday. This um, face shape. I, I'll try to remember to put a link. I found her on Deviant Art, and she's available for free download. And I put the stencil down on this piece of. Uh, drop paper and then sponge flat paint around it. Ended up kind of making a mess so I, I did some details around the edges with a white paint pen. I really love the way this turned out. And I had it, I'm probably going to put her on this background because she just looks fabulous. And she's actually a little bit of an optical illusion when she's put down like this because I, I put a pic this picture on Facebook and a lot of people couldn't see her face they because you're drawn to this this right here and if you don't know that that there's a face there sometimes you can't see the face you're trying to make a shape out of this so it's really kind of a cool effect so I think what I'm going to do is just glue her onto here this is another drop paper piece and then maybe put this in a journal or I don't know I might frame it because I really do love this it's kind of awesome but um, I cut, cut her out just like I showed you with the other ones but when I cleaned off the stencil after I used it I ripped her eye off you just kind of have to handle these with care especially in, in the areas that are weak points can you see I, did a little repair, but like that whole piece broke off when I was washing her. So, and I don't know why I washed her. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't on my stencils, but she was new, I guess, so I wanted to wash her. I wanted to clean her up, and I broke her. And then now she looks like, you know, she's got this whole Revenge of the Nerds thing going on. <laughs> but that's okay. But yeah, she was really easy to cut out, you know, easy lines. Um, I just need to handle her with more care. Do you ever have this problem with your stencils? Do you see what I'm talking about? Boop. And then on the other side, this one's going this way. These little protrusions like this can sometimes get bent. And a lot of times you can just kind of bend them back into shape. But, you know, sometimes they're kind of stubborn. For the stubborn ones, if you'll hit them with your heat gun for just a second, don't heat them too long because you will melt and warp and completely ruin your stencil. But just get it warm right at the bend and press it down. Let it cool and it will flatten right back out into shape. Do so you see this one's kind of wonky? Barely heat it, press it down. And I'm using this because the plastic gets hot. And there you have it. That will flatten them right back down so you don't have those little things sticking up. So there's a little tip for repairing. And that is 
um, the extent of my stencil knowledge. The end.